Oh, hi there. Thanks for showing up for your learning once again. It's Grant, the SAT Genie. And today we're looking at a complex question with a very simple answer. And uh, so let's take a look and unpack this question type and see where we can find some extra points for ourselves on the SAT. And this question, unlike yesterday's, we're just gonna dive straight in and I'll show you how to do it. So what we've been asked to do is we've been asked to take this expression here and rewrite it in the form a plus bi. But i is a very special number in math, and it's, uh, it's a number that introduces a whole new set of numbers, the complex numbers. And i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So another identity that this gives us is that i squared is equal to negative 1. And we're going to see that this fact about i is very useful in this problem. And that's actually the, like the literal definition of its square root is negative one. So, sorry, it is the square root of negative one. So when we square it, we receive negative one. Okay, so I know we don't use our square roots a lot in the grocery store. So I just wanted to review that idea that that's the same, that's, this is basically saying the same thing. All right, so now let's go ahead and see. The hint is to multiply by the conjugate. So I'll show you what that means. And then we'll talk about why it works and some other places we use this in mathematics. So first I'm gonna rewrite the expression. So I have eight minus i all divided by three minus two i. And then just like if we were adding fractions together, like let's say I have two thirds and I wanna add that to five sixths, well, I can't add those fractions together because I don't have what's called a common denominator. So what I'm allowed to do in this case is multiply this first fraction by one, but I'm gonna multiply it by a special flavor of one. Two over two is the same thing as one. That's like saying two divided by two, or we have two cookies and two people, and we find that every person gets one cookie, okay? And we can multiply things by one and they don't change. Um, so I can do this multiplication by one without changing the actual number. And so then when we did that, we would have four sixths plus five sixths. And we would find that that total is equal to nine sixths, which is a very fancy way of saying, um, three over two, three halves would be our answer there. Okay. So in any case, we're going to do the same type of thing that we do here with a fraction and multiply it top and bottom by the same thing. If you multiply things top and bottom by the same thing, they don't change. So that doesn't change the, uh, change the question anyway. So I'm going to multiply here by three plus two I on the bottom and three plus two I on the top. This is a special math trick called multiplying by the conjugate. And I'll explain how it works in, in just a moment. So let's do the uh, multiplication on the top first. I'm going to have here, I have to multiply this eight by both elements in the next bracket. So I'll bring down an equal sign and eight times three is in fact 24, as you well know. And then eight times two I, well, that would be eight times two times I, which gives me plus 16 I. And then I will have negative I times three. So that will be minus three I's because they're negative. And then the last one that I'll do is negative I times plus two I. And this is the place where you might make an error, even if you are on the right track, negative I, times i, well, that will give you negative i squared. But we already know that i squared is negative one. So negative i times i will give you positive one. So I will have plus two here. And it can also help to break these down. If I have negative i multiplied by two i, this is the multiplication we just did, that will give us negative two i squared, which is like saying negative two times negative one and negative two times negative one is in fact positive two. That's why I've written positive two there. So we've multiplied the numerator. Now it's time to multiply the denominator. And now we'll see the special property that multiplying by the conjugate 
in a, that gives us and why it's a really useful trick in, in our math. Okay, so let's scroll this up. And we're going to go 3 times 3, so that gives us 9. 3 times 2i gives us plus 6i. And then negative 2i times 3 gives us minus 6i. And then last, we'll do negative 2i times positive 2i. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And i squared is negative 1. So we'll have negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 here. All right. And now we get to uh, simplify this. So let's simplify the numerator first, and then I'll show you the magic of the denominator. So 24, we're going to take this 24, and we're going to add this 2. That gives us 26. We're going to take this uh, 16i and take away 3i. That's like 16 apples minus 3 apples. We will have plus 13 apples. But they're not apples. They're i's. All right. And then down here, this 9 and the 4 go together. That gives us 13. And then the plus 6i minus 6i is just 0. So those inconvenient i's in the denominator disappear. And we're just left with 13. So this is the whole expression, what it looks like. 26 plus 13i over 13. So now we can factor a 13 out of the uh, top. So that would look like this. 13 multiplied by 2 would recreate a 26. And then multiplied by i, well, that would recreate 13i if I did this multiplication later on. I have no plan of doing that multiplication. It's now very useful being factored out. And then that's all divided by 13. 13 divided by 13 happens to be 1, so those numbers cancel, and we are left with 2 plus i. This whole expression here is just equal to 2 plus i, this one here. And we were told that it could be written in the form a plus bi, and then we were asked to find the value of a. So a equals 2, and that's the very simple answer to this question. Okay, so the magic of multiplying by the conjugate is what it can do is remove things that are inconvenient in their current form, but have convenient square roots. Like, sorry, that have convenient squares. So i squared is much more convenient to work with than i because i squared is negative 1. And that's very easy to work with. It's just a negative number. Uh, whereas this is a complex number. It introduces a good deal of complexity to the question when we have to tackle our complex numbers. So another place where this shows up is what we call rationalizing the denominator with expressions like this one. In this case, we have something that is inconvenient the square root of 5, but it has a convenient square, which is 5. The square root of 5 squared is just 5. So in this case, if I rewrite the expression, 2 plus the square root of 5, all divided by 3 minus the square root of 5, and then I go ahead and I get my multiply by 1 special pen, and I'm going to multiply by the conjugate, which is 3 plus the square root of 5, divided by 3 plus the square root of 5. And this is how we create the conjugate. We create the conjugate just by reversing the sign in front of the term we would like to have disappear. And I'll show you again, it will disappear. Okay, so if we multiply by the conjugate here, I'm just going to bring this uh, to the just down here with an equal sign. And we're going to do that same multiplication. 2 times 3, the first element times the first element, gives me 6. 2 times the square root of 5 gives me plus 2 root 5. 2 times the square root of 5. And then the root 5 times 3 gives me plus 3 times the square root of 5. And then root 5 times root 5 gives me 5. That's our numerator. Our denominator, and again, we're going to see this magic that multiplying by the conjugate introduces. First, we have 3 times 3, which is 9. 3 times positive root 5, which is plus 3 root 5. And then negative root 5 times 3, which will be minus 3 root 5. And that's where the magic of the conjugate happens. To eliminate that element whose square is convenient, 
but working with it unsquared is not convenient. I mean, the square root of five, you know, the square root of five, what this looks like, if you look at a decimal expansion is gross. If I take five, but I take a square root, there it is, 2.23606797499. Do you want to do long division with that? Ain't nobody wants to do long division with that. So we don't want that in the uh, um, bottom of our fractions. So we can eliminate it by uh, multiplying by the conjugate. And last step here, negative root five times positive root five is negative five. Okay, so this gives us uh, 6 plus 5, which is 11 on the top, plus 2 root 5, plus 3 root 5, gives us here, um, that gives us uh, 5 root 5, plus 5 root 5, and then we're going to divide that all by 9 plus 3 root 5 minus 3 root 5, that's just 0, so 9 minus 5 is 4, and this would be the fully simplified expression. I can tell that's fully simplified because 11 and five do not share factors with four. So there's no way to simplify that expression anymore. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's multiplying by the conjugate. So one last uh, thing about the conjugate here and what it looks like when we multiply by it. Let me just say, let's just say that I have something like A minus B and it's this B that I want to eliminate. Then I could uh, multiply that by the conjugate of that would be a plus b. You're just going to flip that sign there. So if I have something like 2 plus 3 root 3, and I want the conjugate for that, it would be 2 minus 3 root 3. And just by flipping these signs in, in front of the inconvenient element, well, that would give you, I'll just expand this one quickly. It's four minus six root three plus six root three minus that is 27. Because three root three times three root three is nine times three. Nine times three is 27. So there, that would give us um, negative 23, this expression here. Yeah, so this multiplying by the conjugate trick, it is very rare that you will need that skill on the SAT, but they might ask you a question like this one. Please rationalize this expression and give us the value of one of these coefficients, perhaps like give us the value 11 over four or something like that. Or you can have a complex number question where this skill shows up. And I call these types of questions, they're uh, 1590 questions. They're designed to knock 90% or more of students back from a 1600 so that uh, we can distinguish who those truly elite students are who have a very consummate knowledge of all of these math skills. So if you uh, were not able to solve this one without a walkthrough, have no fear. High scores are still very possible, even if your work with complex numbers, numbers like I, are uh, is not there yet. So I salute you for showing up for your learning. That's Grant, the SAT genie, showing up to help you out with uh, this complex question with a very simple answer. Thanks again, everyone, and bye for now.